Okay, Wan here with 148. Uh, thank you guys for joining us tonight. Why don't you guys introduce yourself so everyone knows who you are. Awesome, hi, um, I'm Adrian Emerson. I am the lead teacher on the Robo Wranglers. I'll let you go. Hi, I'm Madison. I'm a student leader on the team, and I'm on the mechanical design team. Very cool. Well, welcome, guys. Madison, you were on the first episode, right? Yes, I was. Okay, cool. Uh, you could see the first episode. We had a little connection issue. Uh, <laughs> man looked like approximately six pixels, but yeah, so that's great. <laughs> uh, Yay! Uh, thanks for joining. Um, let's talk about uh, what you guys do. So. So what's what's the skinny on on the Boar Wranglers this season? Ooh, yeah, that's a big question. Well, we went through the normal week two depression, um, depression. and I think now we're finally coming out of it. Can, wait, wait. Um, can, before you go, can you can you just clarify that for me? Like uh, actual, you like, know, actual? I have this theory that week two, you know, week one, you're all excited, and by week three, you have some pretty decent prototypes and you're ready to move forward. But like week two is when you know you kind of are still testing. You don't really have anything super promising yet. And um, and everyone goes into a little bit of a depression, but um, I think we're good now. Uh, we're feeling a little bit better, um, and I'll let Madison uh, take over with actually probably one of our biggest successes of the week. What'd you do on Saturday? Oh, so Saturday, <laughs> <laughs> Jesse and I we dropped our sheet metal for our drivetrain, so that was super exciting. We got it all done, and we sent it to sheet metal Monday morning, so we should have parts back on Friday. Oh, very cool. So yeah, we actually got our electrical panels back today. So we have started wiring all of those up for the drivetrain. Um, so by the time we get sheet metal on Friday, we should be able to uh, have the electronics ready to go. Very cool. So can you tell me a little bit about the process that goes into getting that ready? Do you, do you guys, are you, have you been catting the last whole week just to get it ready for Saturday sheet metal? And and, yes. and, 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 and at work, exactly. Do you just sort of... I've seen some videos of you guys. Can you explain the process of how, how a 148 robot gets designed and made? So the week one Saturday, we all sit down in a big huddle on the field and we go through our drivetrain presentation for the rookies. So we teach them all the different drivetrain concepts and then we ask some critical questions. Like this year was, do we need to push? Do we need to go fast? And we just work through all of these questions until we have a concept of what we want our drive to be this year. Cool. All right. So um, I know you guys are trying to be a little uh, coy about exactly what your drive looks like. Um, so I won't necessarily ask you exactly what it is. But uh, we did hear that you would be willing to answer some yes or no questions based on... Uh, on what your robot was, uh, so we have a yes or no question here from Chief Delphi. Let me just let me just put it up. Uh, oh no, it's gone. I forgot my uh, my doodad crashed. Um, instead, I'll just ask it to you face to face here. Um, so yes or no, are you guys building a holonomic drivetrain this year? <laughs> no. No. Whoa, you guys are laughing about that. You guys have built holonomic drivetrains before. It's not unheard of for sure. Why are you guys laughing about that? <laughs> I didn't expect that reaction. <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead. That was one of a long, a long discussion that we had, but no, no holonomic drivetrain. Interesting. So, can I, can I, can I prod a little bit about that? What, what made you guys choose to not go with that? Because you guys have developed, you've done H drives and swerve drives a long time ago, but H drives seem something you've done more recently. It's purely the size constraint this year. You know, trying to limit how big everything is so we can fit the most balls into the robot. Okay, well, there's a, speaking of balls, we just saw some go cascade behind you there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now that our field is really set up and ready to go, we were hoping you'd be able to see some of the prototypes going behind us tonight. Very cool. Uh, let's, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that, I think, in a little bit. But first, let's, let's kind of talk more about um, the driveline stuff you guys have been doing. So... Um, you, you mentioned that you, you got the, the, the sheet metal ready. What does that process entail? Are you, are you, are you guys catting it? And if so, how are you doing that? And, and how many folks on your team? Are, is it everybody that cats it? Or is it just like a couple no. of people? How does it work? For the drivetrain, it was just myself and one other mentor. And we went out to IFI, one of our title sponsors, and we catted there almost 
like every day last week. So <laughs> cool. What do you use to do? What CAD software do you guys use? We use SolidWorks. Okay, cool. It's good software. We use it here too. So, um, so let's let's talk a little bit more about that. So uh, you've come up with a drivetrain. You know, we know it's not holonomic. It's probably then a lot more simple. Maybe some number of wheels. Maybe. Yes. Well, can I can I say greater than two? Two yes. wheels. In this? Okay. All right. We know that's good. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about how your shooter and uh, intake products. We saw one in the background. What are what are you guys progressing on that? We also saw chains in the video. So let's talk a little <laughs> about that. Yeah, I can talk a little bit about the shooter, and uh, Madison can talk a little bit more about the intake. Um, I think the shooter is probably the thing we're struggling with the most this year, and I don't think that that's um, abnormal listening to what a lot of the other teams have been saying. Um, and so, you know, we have really been trying to uh, nail down in our prototypes um, what we think is going to work the best for us. Um, and. So we kind of started in the beginning and we're trying to do everything really fast, trying to put the most volume through. And we kind of quickly realized that that was not working exactly the way that we planned. So we scaled back and we said, okay, let's get one stream of balls going into the goal accurately and then figure out how to do it quickly. I see. Okay. Um, so we've really been focusing on that this week. And I think, so that kind of played into our week two depression a little bit. <laughs> um, but I think that we had a really great meeting on Saturday and then we had a really great meeting last night um, where we really started to see some successes come out of that, uh, that way of, of thinking. And now from there, we're really trying to ramp up what we think is gonna be possible. Um, and we're changing little constraints uh, and, and trying to figure out, okay, if we change change this one thing, how does it affect what we're doing? And we've really been focusing on a, you know, a flywheel design, uh, again, like a lot of people. But when we um, started having a lot of problems with that uh, towards the beginning of, of last week, um, we started to explore some different options as mm. well, just to make sure we weren't missing anything. Um, we always go back to 2014 when we kind of dismissed the wheeled shooter. And then, of course, the cheesy poofs kind of killed everyone. <laughs> and we were like, man, why do we put more work into that wheeled shooter prototype? Yeah. Um, so we, we tried out some alternative designs to kind of varying degrees of success so far. Um, but we are focusing most of our energy on, on a flywheel shooters. Uh, and like I said, single stream right now, and we're going to see where it goes from there. Cool. Actually, yeah. we saw in the video, um, you guys were, you used like, it looks like last year's robot modified to shoot, to <laughs> fling individual walls at a time. That's because Renegade's great at everything. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> we're just going to put it on the field and call it good for this year. Yeah. We go. released the CAD, so that's like legal, right? I mean, <laughs> oh, oh, I don't know. Let me add Frank yeah. to the call and we'll see what happens. Uh, no, uh, but <laughs> It was fun, though, to kind of see Renegade shooting these little tiny wiffle balls and shooting them as, like more accurately than most of the prototypes we have right now. So, <laughs> awesome. But cool. Madison can speak a little bit more to what's going on with the rest of, uh, rest of our prototypes. Yeah, go so ahead. Talk about them. So we have our tree houses built now. So we've been testing different uh, hangers, sort of. Tree um, houses? Yes. Oh, oh the, the the airships? Is that what they're oh. really called? <laughs> they call them tree houses. <laughs> that's supposed to be a Texas thing, I guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right, go ahead. Sorry about that, Madison. Go ahead. So we've been testing different kinds of rope, and we actually, in the video, there was a clip of the bottom of a prototype going up, which is actually our cart from 2015. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I, I saw I put some weights in there. You, you're weighing it down to full weight, I assume? Yes. Okay, cool. And did that look like it was it didn't fall down immediately after you did that photo, did you? No, it didn't fall down. Okay, that, that's Not always yet. a good sign. Although we have experience with that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was going to say, as a fellow three-level uh, pyramid climber from 2013, I do know what it feels like to see a robot <laughs> a few times. But yeah. yeah. All right, cool. So um, we've also been testing different prototypes for the intake, different types of rollers, we're trying to tune in on a good geometry that we like. Cool. All right. All right. Um, uh, is that what the chainsaw is? Is your is that one of your prototypes a chainsaw for a collector or an intake? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I I, I kind of want to ask and somebody on Chief Delphi asked this as well. Why is it a chainsaw? Is there any good is there any reason it's a chainsaw or just because it's fun? 
Um, well, because we couldn't do a grinder because we can't just like copy the citrus circuits. We got to be 148, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, grinders and chainsaws, I hear you go really good together. I don't, know. I, don't know. I don't know what to say. Well, when you have a when you have a chainsaw and a treehouse, maybe that's not the best combination. <laughs> let's actually let's talk about your field because we can see it from here, not just the ball shooting uh, around the distance, but it looks like you guys have two full like one or two treehouses or uh, airships, and uh, uh, most of the rest is the whole field. What's up with that? Yeah, so we're really excited. Obviously, a lot of people in the community know about our new um, facility uh, this year that came uh, inside of a new CTE center for our high school. And we were lucky enough to be able to purchase an Andy Mark field. And this year, we're really trying to build as close to a full field and two spec field as we can. And we're really planning on and, and hoping that a lot of teams from the area, maybe even out of the area, uh, come here during a uh, competition season to practice practice with us and uh, we want to make sure that if we're going to open up this facility to other teams and um, we, you know we're fortunate enough to have all of it that we you know can make a field as close as we can to, to the real thing so we can all practice on it and kind of get some experience before we go to regionals. So um, we uh, used one of our sponsors, uh, Rack Solutions, and uh, one of their engineers who's also a mentor on the team uh, kind of reverse engineered some of the field components. So. <laughs> Um, we we have we have as I think as close to a full field as we can right now. We're almost done, so we're pretty excited. Very cool. Wow, that's that's quite an accomplishment to build a whole full field. And you said that you're you're going to invite people in. Is that you say that before the season's over, like a preseason scrimmage kind of thing? Yeah, we're hoping um, not anything like super formal, but we're just hoping on Saturdays that if we're in town and other teams are in town that we can have as many people up here. We'd love to run like 3v3 matches um, and, and you know, as close to a real competition as we can. We did that a little bit last year and it was really fun. Uh, so we're hoping that we can do that again this year. Awesome. Sounds great to me. Um, <laughs> so the, I guess the last question I have for you guys, um, you mentioned that the sheet metal is... Uh, going to show up for the rope for the uh, for the uh, the frame on Friday for the drivetrain, and that you've got your um, your electronics support complete already. Is this the production robot? Is this the final the final robot, or is this going to be your beta or your practice robot? Hopefully, we'll see that the sheet metal works and that it will be the actual robot. So. Okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. We have awesome. to make sure all the testing is good, all the configuration, and then go from there. Awesome. Well, uh, do you guys have anything else you want to share with us before we, we uh, call it a night with 148? Uh, I don't think so. I'm good. You guys okay, cool. Good. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you guys for joining us. It's great to have you on as always. Uh, next up on checking, we've got Team 5803. They're um, Team Apex Robotics from SeaTac, uh, Washington. But before we go to them, I want to thank uh, you ladies for joining us. Thank you so much for sharing stuff with, with us, and we look forward to learning more next week. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned, bye, everybody. Francis. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs>